energy. So we talked about matter, now we're going to talk about energy. So in science, uh, we define energy and work maybe a little differently than we uh, use those terms in everyday life. Energy is the capacity to do work. And work is defined as the action of a force through a distance. So here's a guy pushing a box. He's moving the box. He's applying a force to the box and moving it through a distance. That is work. He has done work on the box. Is that a job? Did he get paid for that? That's the other way we talk about work in everyday life. You ride your bike. You're applying a force to the pedals through a distance. You're doing work. Okay? You know, I pushed my cup over. I did work. Yay, I did work. We can go home now, right? So energy is the capacity to do work. Doesn't mean that you're actually doing the work, but you're capable of it. We don't, we don't deal with work very much in chemistry. That's more of a physics thing. They're more concerned with work. Um, but we are concerned with energy in chemistry because energy is the driving force behind a lot of what happens between atoms. So there are different types of energy. Um, the two broad categories are kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion. If something is moving, it has kinetic energy. Potential energy is associated with either the position of the object or the composition of the object. So in this illustration, we have a 10 kilogram weight sitting on top of a building, just kind of teetering there on the edge. It's not moving. It really doesn't have any kinetic energy. But if we give it a nudge and it falls, what happens? It begins to move faster and faster and faster. So it has potential energy here. It is in an unstable position. If you disturb it a bit, something's going to happen. That's a potential energy. As it falls, its potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. As it gets lower and lower, its potential energy decreases, but its kinetic energy increases. It goes faster and faster and faster. And then it hits the sidewalk with a big float. Where did all that kinetic energy go? It gets transferred into thermal energy. Thermal energy is the energy associated with the temperature of an object. It's actually a form of kinetic energy. But instead of kinetic energy in terms of the entire object moving through space or moving back and forth through space, it's the motion of the individual particles. So remember I told you that in a solid, the particles, the atoms or molecules, are not perfectly still, just like you guys aren't perfectly still. Right now, I'd say you guys have pretty low kinetic energy, you know, pretty calm. What if we all started chair dancing? Your butt is stuck on your chair, but you're dancing like a maniac, right? Are you moving relative to each other? No, but there's a lot of energy, right? That is associated with a higher temperature of the matter. So as the temperature increases in, say, a, you know, a bar of gold or something, what's happening is that the individual atoms in the gold are vibrating more and more vigorously. They're not moving through space, but they're oscillating and vibrating in place. So when this weight crashes into the cement, all of its kinetic energy is dissipated as thermal energy, causing the molecules and atoms in the cement and in the weight to move very vigorously. When there is a significant impact like this, sometimes the change in temperature is detectable. With a lot of things, like, you know, I dropped the marker earlier, that's not going to generate enough thermal energy that you'd actually be able to tell by feeling. Any questions? Yes? So then the kinetic energy and potential, potential energy are like hand in hand in the objects in motion? Yeah, but they kind of go inverse with each other. But when the object uh, transfers energy, it's described as thermal, thermal energy? Well, the, the process of transferring is, is something else. 
Um, Okay, so thermal energy is a form, a subset of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy we usually think of is, you know, something flying through the air or falling or a car speeding down the highway. The entire object is moving through space. What we need to recognize is that thermal energy is also kinetic energy. It's an energy of motion, but it's not something going through space. It's just moving within its little space. So my hand here, you know, high kinetic energy, low kinetic energy. Okay, and so there are different forms of energy, and I think what we'll talk about here, yeah, law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can change from one form to another form. It can move from one object to another object, but the total amount of energy is constant. So we see that things that have high potential energy tend to be unstable. You know, piano hanging out the second story window. Why do they do that in cartoons all the time? I don't know. They didn't have big enough doors. They could draw bigger doors. Anyway, it's just fun when the piano falls on the cat or something. It's unstable, right? The rope breaks, it's going to fall. So if you have a rope tied to a piano sitting on the, on the sidewalk and you cut the rope, nothing's going to happen because it has low potential energy because it's already sitting on the ground. There's really no, nowhere for it to fall down. So high potential energy is generally unstable. When something happens to that, the potential energy gets transformed into other forms of energy. So another type of energy that's important is chemical potential energy. So back here we said um, potential energy is associated with position or composition. So the composition of an object has to do with chemical energy. So the chemical potential energy comes about from electrostatic forces between the charged particles that make up atoms and molecules. So think about gasoline. Gasoline is highly flammable, right? got a container of gasoline that's open and you light a match, something's going to happen, right? It's unstable because it has high chemical potential energy, and that has to do with how the different particles within it are arranged. And that's one of the things we'll learn about in chemistry. So we see that energy is always conserved in physical changes and in chemical changes. You can't create or destroy energy. Systems with high potential energy tend to change in a direction that lowers their potential energy. And if their potential energy is becoming less, that energy has to go somewhere. So here's an example of a car. So the car has gasoline, which is high in chemical potential energy. It's unstable. We burn it in a controlled way in the internal combustion engine, and we take that chemical potential energy and we translate that into kinetic energy of the car moving forward. The molecules that come out of the exhaust, the results of the combustion, are now more stable than the gasoline itself. The, the potential energy that was in the gasoline has been translated, um, changed into kinetic energy of the car moving forward. What happens to the temperature of the engine of your car as you run it? It gets hot. Many transfers of energy from one form to another also involve heat. So as the potential energy of the gasoline is turned into kinetic energy of the car, it's not 100% efficient. Some of the potential energy of the gasoline is lost as heat energy. We say lost because it's not useful anymore. Does that make sense? 